Well, speaking of bizarre Trump speeches, Lucas, uh, he also spoke in North Carolina, as you may or may not know. And uh, it just it becomes increasingly clear that that Trump's derangement. You know, people talk about Trump derangement syndrome. I think the real Trump derangement syndrome is the derangement syndrome that Trump himself suffers. And it's only getting worse, especially since these indictments um, have come through. Uh, I imagine it will be much worse after uh, you visit the former president uh, this coming Tuesday uh, to see him off as he's arraigned. But I want to play a couple of clips uh, from his speech in New Jersey, or excuse me, North Carolina. <laughs> New Jersey. In New Jersey. <laughs> He'll eventually do one there, okay? Don't laugh at me. He will speak in New Jersey eventually. But here's uh, what the president has to say in a couple of clips in Greensboro, North Carolina. Such a big, big business, such a powerful business, and such an important business. New England has a liberal tint, but, or taint. I would say taint is a better word, actually. But it, it's a little bit on the liberal side, they say. No comment on that one. (laughs) Just to kind of get us, get us loose, get us into the conversation. Yeah, I, I, that's what I mean when his derangement, like, what do you even say to that? That was such a rant. He always does these weird asides and like will focus on these like very specific words and then like repeat them, on, like almost like he's teasing them out, like taint, tint, taint. He's thinking tint. about yeah. it on, on, live yeah. on stage. <laughs> he's, he's workshopping it in real time and his crowd yeah. is eating it up. Here is another clip. I was a very good student at the Wharton School of Finance. Can you imagine? I wonder if they're proud of me. I got indicted. I wonder if they're saying, oh, that's wonderful. (laughs) I've been indicted twice now in a couple of months. You know, when I was studying and when I was uh, a very, very successful businessman, then I did The Apprentice and I did lots of books that were big, 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 big sellers. Even now I have books that are tremendous sellers. I never had... I never had this stuff in mind. I never had the word indictment. What's indictment mean? Sir, that's when you're extremely dishonest, sir. No, these people are con men. And we have deranged people running it. Indictment doesn't mean when you're extremely dishonest. That's not what that word means. (laughs) Being extremely dishonest might cause you to be indicted. But yeah, there... (laughs) I love when he does that too. He Multiple times he's gone... You know, before I got into politics, because the point he's trying to make is, is just because I'm in politics that I'm um, being gone after like this. But it doesn't make you look good when you go, listen, before I got into politics, I didn't even know what the word indicted means. That's yeah. strange. You probably should. Yeah. As a as a, you know, the son of a real estate mogul, you know, a billionaire in New York. And I mean, with all the legal uh, entanglements he's been in. I heard a statistic and I don't want to misquote it, but he's been, he's apparently been named in thousands of civil suits. So, I mean, this man for all intents and purposes should have an encyclopedic knowledge of the law at this point at, at his age with all of his legal entanglements, but he doesn't, but yeah, setting aside the fact that he butchered the definition of indictment just again, like, no, I imagine the Wharton school of finance is not proud of you, Mr. President. <laughs> They're probably like, can we please just like knock his name off like the roster A hundred percent. I mean, and I would also add that for a man who is apparently such a uh, a well schooled financial guru, I can't help the fact that the the fact that you know he's had to file bankruptcy so many times. He added eight trillion dollars to the the debt, left office with a you know an economic disaster. Yeah, I imagine between that and your various character faults, uh, the Wharton School of Economics is uh, or Wharton School of uh, Finance is not particularly proud of you, Mr. President. Agreed. So, so we got another clip. Let's hear some more. But we can stop them cold, and we will. And we would have had them stop cold, and they know that. And they cheated like dogs. They cheated like nobody's ever cheated before. You turn on your television at 10 o'clock, you would have said, Pennsylvania's a lock. We were up by so much, a lock. All of a sudden, you see that big fat dump, that big dump at 302 or whatever it was in the morning. It's a disgrace what happened. Why? I don't get I don't, it. I don't know why he's talking about th- dumps at 3 a.m. And also, he said they che- his relationship with dogs is very concerning. He well, said they, they cheat. cheated like dogs. Is that a thing? Do dogs cheat? And he'll always say so many things strange about everything, dogs. A do- you're, no, you're right. Everything does a dog. They cheat like dogs. They, you know, they run their mouths like dogs. Mm. They walk like dogs. Everything is like a dog. 
every they file paperwork like a dog. <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> what, you, what I don't understand. Like he has never. What did a dog do to you, Don? <laughs> yeah, like are you a cat person? And this is your way. Like uh, it's okay to just say you prefer cats. It's fine. I. It's so bizarre. So ridiculous. And on, it, yeah, sorry. No, please go ahead. I was just gonna say on the merits of or lack thereof of the point that he made, he once again can't get his head around the fact that sometimes it looks like early in an election night based on which votes got counted when it looks like you're ahead. And then guess what? You count more votes and sometimes you don't end up winning. That's happened in both directions countless times. And one of the reasons that that happened very dramatically in this particular election is because you, before the election even happened, started lying about mail and voting and saying, we shouldn't vote by mail. It's horrible. It's fraudulent. So a lot of your voters didn't vote by mail and more Democrats were comfortable during a pandemic voting by mail. So then when the mail and ballots got counted, it was more going in the direction of Democrats. You're yet to prove widespread fraud, but that doesn't matter to Trump. Well, so, so it goes back to and I've complained about this before, and I think you and I have complained about this offline, as we are probably destined to do for the rest of our lives, or at least as long as this man is in our lives. And that is, it seems like MAGA doesn't understand how time works. It seems like Trump doesn't understand how time works. Like, so you have a point in time, and then time comes after that. You know what I mean? Like, so like if something is going on at 1 p.m., something else, like that situation may very well change at 1.30 p.m., or 5.45 p.m., or 11.26 p.m., this idea that you can arbitrarily pick a point in time, which, by the way, wasn't the voting deadline, right? So it's right. not like he and, – and you just stop the clock here. Time must stop here because whatever's going on at this particular time is something that favors me. And so if, if, if I'm up in the, the, the votes – at you know this point in time we just arbitrarily i decide that we can't count past it it's absurd and to your point about the about the fact that trump single-handedly depressed voter turnout for his own side it's absolutely true as a matter of fact um to whatever extent this matters ron DeSantis, who is very reluctant to take shots at donald trump um in terms of crit criticism he's getting a bit bolder but for the most part he's as tepid and obsequious as the rest even he said to ben shapiro uh, during a uh, an interview a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, I personally disagree with uh, a lot of the pandemic era accommodations, but he was like, it was absolutely foolish of Trump to not to try to encourage conservative voters in red and blue states to avail themselves of those accommodations. And that's the thing that drives me nuts about when conservatives complain about the the voting processes that Democrats want, the voting processes that Democrats want would make it easier for conservatives to vote. It's not just favoring Democrats. You know who can avail themselves of mail-in voting, absentee ballots, quote unquote ballot harvesting, all these things? Conservatives in red and blue states, Luke. That's the yep. thing. What they really it's what, what they're it's what they're so upset about is the idea that maximum voter turnout. We'll get more Democrats out in the there end that, that Democrats are just more popular. It's the only thing they're upset about. And what does that say about your policy? Not anyone else's fault. Your policy agenda that the only way you can conceive of winning an election is making it really hard for certain populations of people to vote. And you know, as we've heard now, an audio recording from some Republican strategists acknowledging this about college students and countless other GOP individuals recognizing that you will lose if you make it really easy to vote, not because there's a bunch of fraud, but because when we actually hear the voice of the American people at large and effectively and make it easy for a lot of people to make their voice heard, we hear <laughs> resoundingly the fact that we are a more left of center country. We do want actual policies that benefit our lives and not just tax cuts for those at the top of the economic ladder. It is wild that they'll accept the knowledge and not try to change their policy agenda that if we let it be really easy to vote, we're never going to win because then a bunch of people who don't like us will be able to vote. Yeah, they there, there are two broad options before them in terms of like playing politics within reasonable good faith. That is change your policy or at the very least change your rhetoric. I mean, ideally you would do both, right? They won't do either. They Like, like I agree with you. You would think that, okay, maybe we should modify our policy um, in in ways that make them more popular. But if you're if you're reluctant for whatever reason to do that, just on principle, no, I refuse to, uh, you know, move to a more progressive tax system. I want tax cuts for the rich. Then at the very least, improve your rhetoric on it to try to win people over and we'll, you can do that. 
what do you think is going to happen? Your entire policy agenda, historically, and as we're seeing currently, um, or we just did with Trump's agenda, um, more in the modern era, it is constantly the GOP agenda to assist in making the wealthy more wealthy and the powerful more powerful. And then you attach that to rhetoric that demonizes every single population of people other than like one. <laughs> Why do you think you're going to win elections with that? All your rhetoric uh, focuses on is we hate woke and we really hate LGBTQ people. And then your uh, policy agenda doesn't benefit the lives of many people. Why do you think you would be voted for? And that's, you don't, you think you have to make it really restrictive for a lot of populations. See, uh, of you say that, vote. you say that Lucas, but you haven't thought about gas stoves. And what about the shoes that the green M&M has worn? What about those, Luke? What about those, Luke? What are your answers to that, Luke? Sure, you're like, listen, the tax policy, the health care policy, all these things, they're terrible under Republicans. But have you thought about M&M shoes? Have you thought about mermaids? Have you thought about these things? And again, I have to say, this isn't even just Josiah and, us, uh, Josiah and myself being uh, biased libs. The economy objectively does better under Democratic administrations, and they're still fis more fiscally responsible, as the GOP says that they are, while overseeing a better economic reality. And also, the policies happen to be directed toward benefiting the lives, far from perfect, but uh, of working Americans. So then it has to be a distraction, like you said, with the shoes of, of M&Ms. You can well, go to the next clip. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> so we, we we invoke the name of Ron, Ron, just wrong. You know, oh my God. Why doesn't he call him wrong instead of Ron? Wrong to Sanctus. Wrong to, listen. We, oh my gosh, we should, we need to write this down and pitch it to somebody. Wrong to Sanctus. Yeah, so we invoked his name and uh, naturally we have to play a clip from, again, the Greensboro, North Carolina speech from former President Trump in which he too, mentions Rhonda Sanctus. We're leading Rhonda Sanctimonious by 56, 69 percent for Trump, 13 percent for DeSanctus, and Pence has six. You know, once you get used to saying DeSanctus, it's hard to say DeSantis. I was actually being interviewed, and I was trying to be serious, and I called him DeSanctus. I said, that's not good, but he's changing his name. You know, now it's DeSantis. And I put a little message out. Never change your name in the middle of a campaign. <laughs> you don't change your name in the middle of a campaign. It's sort of true that uh, sometimes I'll be like Ron DeSantis because of how many times I've heard Trump say Sanctus. And it uh, reminds me of Truth Social. I'll have a hard time sometimes not going true. Essential, what? Because of Trump's mistake. You're no, you're not wrong. It's funny. He what, that was actually a fairly salient point that you, I, even I did it right when I was teasing that clip. I meant to call him Ron DeSantis, and I called him Wrong DeSantis and said, mm. like, I listen. People have said for the longest time that Trump is an expert brander, and some of it I didn't get. Like crooked Hillary is just not like. It's not rhetorically clever to me. You know what I mean? It's not like a pun. It's not like it doesn't rhyme, but it stuck with people. And I guess I'm, ha I'm going to have to concede Trump's brilliance in this respect because he's he's gotten to me now, too. <laughs> I, I also struggle to say the name of the governor in Florida. But I don't so. even know. At least Crooked Hillary was supposed to make people think that she was crooked. I don't know what Sanctus is supposed to make me think about Ron Sanctimonious. <laughs> See, you did, you did it. Guess, he's, he's got us. I he's guess, in here. I guess it's because I was going to make the point, but my brain lapsed and forgot to make it, that he also calls him Ron Sanctimonious, that does at least have, you know, Sanctimonious being attached to it. Well, that I, was strange. I, no, it's not strange. He has he has hacked us. He's, he's hacked us. He's haunting our brain. It's true. He, there's like synapses misfiring now. But the other one that I heard in the aftermath of the um, the really terrible Twitter space campaign launch was Ron disaster now that one is <laughs> that one makes sense that one's clever because even sanctimonious you know i i guess it kind of applies to desantis mm -hmm. but like even then i'm having to truly like spend an extra 0. 0.7 seconds articulating his name trump has ruined ron desantis's name it's 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 terrible and the I other guarantee point you, he, he sorry no go ahead the other point he made was uh the DeSantis, DeSantis thing, which was just so strange. Why is, pick one, Ron. Well, why are you switching back and forth? It's so strange. Never no. agreed with 
Trump like this. this is, I feel weird. I it, it, it feels it feels dirty, doesn't it? It doesn't feel it right at dirty. all. Yeah. So we've got one other clip I want to play from the uh, Greensboro, North Carolina speech. Um, and uh, just without further ado. Transgender insanity and other inappropriate racial, sexual or political content on our children. It's amazing how strongly people feel about that. You see, I'm talking about cutting taxes. People go like that. Talking about talk about transgender. Everyone goes crazy. Who would have thought five years ago you didn't know what the hell it was? But one. Maybe you didn't. Yikes. Five years ago. Um, That clip is so interesting to me because and actually Aaron Rupar highlighted that clip for us and he wrote on twitter as the description trump notes his crowd is more enthused about bigotry than they are for tax cuts and it's exactly right as many people have have noted at all these speeches not even just trump all these republican figures they'll talk about all these different things freedom and liberty and tax cuts and it's okay okay and then they start being bigoted against trans people and it's yeah ah, whoa and it shows you, while, as we talked about previously, Josiah and I don't understand how you could be distracted by all the things that uh, the GOP tries to make the focus and the obsession so they don't have to answer for why their policies aren't beneficial to the lives of their constituents. A lot of people do get so caught up in and then vote for people who work against their own interests because of how caught up uh, with they are. Hatred for people. And that is... As Trump noted, so much more important to a lot of his followers than his tax cuts or than any of the other things he talks about. Yeah, there again, I mean, like hearing you articulate this, it's something where in a really cynical, sleazy way, Trump has. So there was a political commentator who said something to the effect of that, you know, even to this day, Donald Trump understands the 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 animus of the Republican Party better than any lifelong Republican, better than any Republican politician. I think that's true. Like there are smarter, shrewder, um, more sophisticated Republican politicians out there who are clever in ways that Donald Trump would never be. But in terms of understanding their own base, like I think Donald Trump understands the Republican base better than Mitch McConnell has ever, uh, at least in terms of the modern GOP. And this is something that is in- intensely frustrating because you know, if you study political science, you know, most political scientists agree that the rational so-called rational voter and the rational actor theory of decision making doesn't nearly manifest itself in politics to the rate that people wish it did. And I hate to say this because, of course, irrationality can manifest in any point of the political spectrum, including on the left, including in the Democratic Party. Certainly we're not above that. But when I look at data is data. Facts are facts. And you look at the facts and it's overwhelming. You take the top 10 poorest, least healthy, uh, most reliant on federal subsidies, least educated states in the country, like seven out of 10 are Republican run states or more. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's like the proof is in the pudding. Republican policies don't just hurt the trans community, don't just hurt women, don't just hurt, you know, um, children or the welfare state or whatever. They hurt Republican voters. And it's not rational to be so consumed about uh, a trans athlete than it is about your own pocketbook. And odds are, if you were really voting, what, to whatever extent you harbor awful, bigoted feelings about marginalized groups, which you shouldn't, at the very least, if you're going to do that, you should be more concerned with your own self-interest than your hatred of others. It makes absolutely no sense. The very definition of cutting your nose off to spite your face, and it's nothing new. I want to I want to emphasize this. That is something that predated Trump because Republican policies have been bad for Republican-run states and the country for decades. It is predates Trump. Trump has just recognized it and realized, listen, if we're going to compete policy to policy, we'll lose. If we are going for the optimum maximum voter turnout, we lose. He's publicly said these things, that Democrats are better for the economy, that if we have maximum voter turnout, Republicans will lose elections. He said all of this. He's been very transparent. He understands the only way to win is to 
crush the the culture war game, to blow it up, to make sure you win, to feed into grievance politics. And that's why, despite his record and despite the record of his policy, he's going to do reasonably well uh, in the next election, I think, even with all this. Thank you so much for watching. For the outro on this video, I want to plug Josiah's channel. Hit them with it, Josiah. Hey, everybody. I appreciate you watching. You can find me at youtube.com slash at pondering politics, one word, pondering politics. If you like progressive commentary that focuses on coalition building with other elements of the left and calling the Republican Party out for what it's become, I hope you'll view my channel. Give me a like and subscribe and some feedback. Again, youtube.com slash at pondering politics. Thanks again.